Hey everyone, it's Finn here. Yesterday was uh, my dad's anniversary and in the sort of few days leading up to that I wasn't feeling too good and um, before that I've been ill. So basically I've, my head is, is not in it right now and I'm sorry about that. I've been <laughs> trying desperately to become motivated enough and switched on enough to think of something interesting to, to talk about this week, but I'm of no use to you at all. So the only thing that I can kind of come up with is to talk about the fact that I don't know what to talk about and how it's a feeling that I'm pretty familiar with. When I was in art school, I often really struggled with being motivated having my head switched on and engaging with things and actively exploring interests and and voicing my opinion, really. I suppose it's, uh, maybe it's being uninspired. I feel pretty uninspired right now. I feel pretty un uninspired by everything. I just feel tired and, and exhausted, really. And I suppose I was wondering, how does everyone get out of that when they feel that way? I'm not really too sure how I get out of it, but obviously I do. Maybe it's something that you just wait out until you feel a bit better. Then I'm thinking there's got to be a way to kind of try and be a bit more proactive about the situation. So I don't like feeling like this. I'm just interested to know if there's anything that people do that helps them, like what, what actually inspires them and how do you stay engaged with the world just generally <laughs> i know that's a pretty big statement to make but i really get overwhelmed quite a lot by things and i often feel like very simple tasks or what seems to be simple tasks for other people is really really draining for me and i'd love to know how to get out of that yeah it'd be nice to hear from people I mean, on the one hand, it's understandable that I feel this way right now because, like, physically I was very drained and then emotionally I've kind of not had a great time the past few days, so I do feel tired. I think that's fair enough. But it is something that I I've kind of have to deal with quite a lot. Um, this is probably going to be very short and sweet, but, um, yeah, um, what inspires you? I think that's a nice question to ask. And if you ever feel like the way I'm feeling right now, like, how do you get out of it? Yeah, I'll, I hope people contribute. Okay, well, I hope everyone's doing well, and, um, I'll speak to you again soon. Bye-bye. Hey, working title project, it's Alex. Um, but first of all, I want to just say I'm sorry, Finn, that you're going through all this and I'm sending tons of love your way. Wait, basically, what I'm going to talk about in this video is just try to give some real practical advice. And this, I'm, I'm talking about this as a person who has a history of chronic depression, um, who up until very recently never really let myself cry about anything. Um, I really never dealt with my emotions and I feel like that was a huge reason why I was depressed all the time and I always, um, it really prevented me from living a functional life at all. Basically, what I used to do is something emotional would happen in my life. I would only let let it affect me on the surface. I would basically just try to swallow all my feelings down and try to just keep living my life, which never, never worked. It never works for anyone. It weighs you down. It's definitely, it's emotional baggage. I had to learn basically how to feel emotions. Um, I'm still learning. For example, recently someone sent me a really, really hateful email that really hurt me. And what I used to do in this kind of situation, just kind of read it, be sad for a bit, and but not really let it fully affect me. Um, I thought that that meant I was being strong. I thought that I had to do that to get on with my life, but it doesn't work. What I do now in that situation is 
I try to get all of my feelings about that out instead of internalizing them. Um, and this is the only way that I've been able to just get on with my life. I kind of imagine like emotional events like that as getting a, like having a wound on your body. You know, you have the option of either ignoring it and just hoping that it will heal properly on its own, which it won't, <laughs> or you can choose to deal with it and make sure that it heals properly. Um, and sometimes, you know, that involves things that are more painful. Um, and it's easier to just try to ignore it because you don't want to be in more pain. You want to, you want to heal, but you have to put yourself through some, some more pain for it to properly heal, like properly cleaning out the wound and possibly getting stitches, possibly, you know, doing whatever it, it you need to do to make sure that it heals properly. So for me, the emotional equivalent of doing all that stuff is really like letting myself fully feel everything I feel about the situation which is very scary I realize and I don't think a lot of people are used to doing that but for example with the analogy that I used about this really hateful email and what I often do is I will compile a list either in my head if there's not much or an actual physical list of all the things that hurt me the most about it um, and this could be like with that example it could be specific things from the email which really hit hard or it could be thoughts I have in my own head while I'm reading the email like thoughts that come up for myself like Maybe I'm thinking while I'm reading it, they're right, you know, I'm worthless, I'm a terrible human being. I'll write all that down on a list and I'll give myself time to get in a space where I can just process all of that. Taking time to just, you know, maybe lie on my bed and just focus on all of that stuff, all of that emotional stuff and just repeat it and repeat it and repeat it. just give myself time to let all of those things that I wrote on the list really sink in and this really helps bring all of my emotions to the surface whereas you know before if I had never done that before <clears throat> because I wanted to avoid all those feelings I just wouldn't let those feelings surface I would just swallow them and because of that, I was always carrying those negative emotions around with me. I did never let them come out. I never let worked them out. It's much easier after doing that to get back to a normal routine and not let yourself sink into depression. And I usually feel a lot lighter. After that, I feel, I feel drained. And, you know, I might need to do this many times. I might need to give myself a lot of time to fully work through everything. But there usually comes a point, if I work hard enough at it, where I feel like I've completely expressed that emotion and I'm not carrying it around with me anymore. Then, after that, I'm able to just get on with my life. And when I've reached that point, I, <clears throat> for me, I found helpful is just going, getting back into my routine and, you know, making to-do lists of all the things maybe that I have missed out on or neglected since starting to deal with that um, because that can also build up too and you can also start to carry guilt about that you know like if you've taken five days to work through all of this stuff um, and maybe you have ignored your friends or you didn't return calls I make a list of everything I need to do and everyone I need to make things right with I make a list of how I'm going to get my life back on track again and I make a plan for that. Now with those tools I'm able to work through everything and get back on track again with my life. So anyway I hope some of that was helpful. Hey everyone it's been kind of a little while since last I did a video. Kind of a whole motivation thing which is why I thought it would be perfect <laughs> to throw in on this topic. Although I had to think about it for a little bit because 
I wasn't exactly sure what I wanted to say. I really liked what Alex was saying, and I liked using the you know, example of a wound healing, dealing with how you, you know, dealing with things that are in your life that are painful and bringing you down and how to get motivation and inspiration to move beyond that. One of the things that Alex said though was like, you know, wounds don't heal on their own and see that's the thing that is a little different for me where I like to look at it, if I want to use that example, I like to look at it uh, that, you know, there are paper cuts and there are cat scratches and there are little things and those will heal on their own. I have always had this kind of way of dealing with things very I've been very always very good at compartmentalizing things to the point of completely forgetting them now it's there is uh, is of course uh, based on the severity of the issue whether it's successful or not but you know, things will upset me, things will affect me, and I'll take it, not process it, I guess, as fully as you would think, but bury it, and then literally, usually by the next day, I almost don't even remember it. Give it a week or a month, and I won't be able to recall it. It's kind of almost a, a selective memory thing where I can take that emotional damage and make it go poof. Now, I, of course, people are like, wow, isn't that nice? It doesn't always work and doesn't work on huge things very well, although it will dampen them down. Problem is, is you always have to eventually deal with things. And motivation comes to play where it's, I'm not very motivated to deal with that all the time. Sometimes you don't have a choice, though, and you kind of have to deal with things. Transition, you know, as an example in my life, coming to a head at this point in my life. I mean, I'm 36, a little bit later on than a lot of people. I kind of had no choice but to deal with it now because... All the suppressing came to a head at the beginning of the year. And the problem is, is I don't like dealing with those type of things. I'm very much like to bury it, ignore it, get rid of it, because I don't want to think about it. But, yeah, you know, it's, it's definitely, I agree with Alex completely on that, is you, you kind of have to sit down and go through it, or go work with someone and go through it, and just understand it completely before you can completely move on, and integrate that into yourself and move forward with it, or it will eat you up and that doesn't really work that well. But, you know, going to the main topic of motivation and inspiration on things, I don't know what really inspires me. It's one of those, I kind of, I've been a hermit for so many years that I kind of, something hits me and it hits me. You know, I'll suddenly, you know, just inspiration hits me. I don't have a good way of, like, forcing inspiration to happen. I just, it just kind of happens. Motivation, on the other hand, that I can kind of control. I have this, everything kind of goes in cycles. And I don't know if this is me trying to control it so I don't lose interest in something. But I have this kind of a cycle that happens with things. For, you know, I'll be really gung ho about something for a while and I'll work, 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 work to it. Uh, and, you know, like, for this channel, make a whole bunch of videos, and then suddenly take weeks off. Or video games. Oh man, this happens with video games. It's like, I'll be huge into playing a game when it comes out, uh, and then take time off for like six months, and then come back and be huge again, and then take time off, and then come back and be huge again. But it's just like, I, I never have this permanent, I'm always motivated to get something done, it is everything comes in cycles. So I've kind of tried how to control the cycles and make it so things don't always go away you know I don't lose motivation completely by 
forcing it as much. So, I'll, you know, the whole point behind it is to kind of... I'll focus on it, but try not to go all out. Because when I focus on something, man, I can focus on it. I swear it's some kind of weird ADD something or other, but when I'm focused, I'm focused. Nothing else matters. The problem is, is then I'll burn myself out on it and then don't want to touch it forever. So the trick, of course, to keep the motivation going is to kind of see what's happening and learn to, like, stretch it out. Which means almost making mini-cycles to keep the inspiration and motivation alive. And that kind of goes back to everything that's kind of happened in that it, it, it's you trying not to forget because remember I can I, the whole compartmentalization thing it's almost you know I, on some of that stuff I can literally take it and throw that bottle it up and then throw it away and then it I'll f completely forget it ever happened but that might not necessarily always be healthy so it's the kind of making sure to rotate the bottles through and bring the stuff back from the back bur don't forget to bring the stuff from the back burner to the front burner you kind of have to deal with things otherwise that back burner is going to boil over and take over your life and that can be bad so I don't know it's a tricky topic but hey it got me motivated to make a video again so I'm I don't know I kind of went all over the place what do you guys think? Uh, I think mine's probably the last in this little series, so I'll open it up <clears throat> to everyone out there. What do you, what motivates you? What inspires you? Does you? How do you deal with things to keep yourself motivated? I guess that's about it. Bye. Let's go out back and plan a family.